and good every shout to you and I hope you're all well. Firstly, Mazdov this week, Mazdov to Louise and Richard Shama on Benji's Bar Mitzvah, to Amy and Benji Kaplan on the birth of a son, to Alan Friend on his 80th birthday, Andrew Miller on his 70th birthday, David Silver on his 70th birthday, and to Jennifer Kaplan on her 70th birthday. And a Mazatov to BS at Yavna on its 13th anniversary. I want to say thank you to Juliet Berman on behalf of the rabbinic team, on your officers and staff at BS for her help and hard work in covering the office and events over the last eight months. And to everyone who's volunteered, donated, set up events and taken part in activities virtually to help us stay connected during these times. We wish Rafur Shalema a full and speedy recovery to anyone who is unwell and a Rikosh Yamim long life to anyone who has a yacht site in the coming week. You know, it's very rare for someone nowadays to be called a national treasure or national hero. But that's exactly how Captain Tom Moore, who celebrated his 100th birthday yesterday, is being hailed. And quite rightly. Because the World War II veteran set out to walk around his garden 100 times to raise just a thousand pounds for charity, but achieved his aim 30,000 times over and has now raised an amazing £30 million in support of the NHS. And at the same time, the former tank commander, who's now been promoted to the rank of honorary colonel, has managed to capture the hearts of the nation, broken two world records, including his duet with Michael Ball, which went straight to number one in the charts, and he now has a Royal Mail birthday postmark to his name. So we say happy birthday, Captain Tom. You know, it makes us think, Amid, among, and amid the gloom of recent news headlines, could this twinkly-eyed ray of sunshine be a symbol of a realignment of society's values? You know, the Gomorrah in Pesachim records that Rabbi Yosef was once deathly ill and was about to pass away. But when he returned to good health, his father asked him what he saw when he was about to die. And Rabbi Yosef answered tersely, I saw an olam hachafuch, an upside-down world. Those uh, above were below, while those below were above. Those who were considered important in this world were below insignificant, while those below, those who are insignificant in this world, were above in that world. And his father said to him, My son, you have seen an olam baru, a clear world. The world you have seen is the true world, as in that world, people's standings befit them. Now, although the world we will continue to see and respect the superficial, Perhaps we've been given a glimpse into the true world and what's truly important. Because who would have thought just a few weeks ago that instead of worshipping overpaid footballers and celebrities, instead we'd be standing on our doorsteps applauding the underpaid staff of the NHS, other caregivers and essential workers, the true heroes. And if anything positive could come out of this situation, then surely it has to be this, the recognition of what and who are of real value. The understanding of the difference of what some are paid, but what others earn. The former doesn't necessarily signify worth, whilst the latter indicates how hard work isn't always rewarded proportionately. You know, immediately after making the clarion call, Kadoshim to you, you shall be holy. The Torah launches into a list of legislation that governs our interpersonal relationships. Concern for the poor and the stranger. The prohibitions of theft and deceit, protection for the disadvantaged, and amongst it all, says the Torah, You mustn't defraud your friend, you must not commit robbery. The wages of a worker must not remain with you until morning. Now the commentaries question why the Torah describes the injured party here as a raya, as a colleague or friend, surely that's the last person we defraud. Well, the Orachim explains that it uses this term to warn us not to take advantage of the other person's friendship towards us to shortchange them in what's due to them. We mustn't play loose with a friend's money because they're our friend and presumably they won't voice their objection for the sake of preserving the friendship. And on a homiletic level, we can suggest that to achieve the lofty heights of Kadoshim to you, of holiness, to emulate God himself who is holy, means to recognize the worth of those around us, and particularly those closest to us. We're expected to be able to see that Selem Elohim, the image of God in other people, the unique and infinite value that each person brings to the world, 
because it's that that creates holiness in this our world says the torah do not leave it over until morning do not wait until you recognize it and i say let's commit ourselves to doing it now i wish you all a wonderful shabbat Ciao.